playing football, so there's no. So, you see, well, okay. so there is a period when the teams are playing on a Saturday and a Sunday when you, Christina, and any other female members would be able to go into the changing room when there's nobody in there so you can view what's there and what isn't there. Thank you, Chair. That's okay. Sorry, we've had a proposal from now. That's been slightly amended uh, by Council of Lewis. Uh, can we have a second or not? Okay, thank you. Um, so, so the proposal is that we have a board board back by development officer, but also that we have those community members that want a, um, a, a site visit but uh, will be arranged for that to happen, and we'll go around um, a few of the buildings. Okay? Is that, are we agreed on that?
in our countries require broader consensus before being led into conflict by the executive. And finally, Chair, under first past the post, elections are determined by a small number of swing voters in a few marginal seats. Uh, financial resources are targeted at such voters, which means money talks far more loudly in our disproportionate system than under the law. Uh, there's also a few common myths about first past the post which I'd like to address. Uh, firstly, it's promoted as leading to stable government. Uh, in fact, we have we have, averaged, we have averaged one unplanned election every 10 years over the last century. Countries with first past the post have elections slightly more frequently than those with PR. Secondly, it's entirely possible to retain a constituency link under PR. The Electoral Reform Society, for example, recommends larger constituencies electing four to six MPs under a single transferable vote system. So in that case, Wirral would have a single constituency returning four MPs. Uh, thirdly, the AV referendum vote in 2011 was not a referendum on proportional representation. AV is not proportional and produces similarly perverse outcomes as first past the post. Uh, in fact, opinion polls consistently show overwhelming public support for a voting system where seats match votes. So, Council's first past the post is way past its sell by date. It is a dead weight stifling our democracy. As the excellent Labour campaign for electoral reform report into PR puts it, it is no exaggeration to say that proportional representation is a prerequisite for a properly functioning democracy in which power, wealth, and opportunity are in the hands of the many and not the few. So I hope you agree with that, and I urge you to support the vote. Deals on the PR as well, and the deals on the, on the first class of 
I don't see that as a, as a remedy. My view is it's a system that British people have voted on and would like to keep. Thank you, Chair. And thanks for the notice of motion, Pat. Um, it brings to, it brings to the fore a burning issue in this country, and I, th I think the vast majority of what you said was correct, in my opinion. Um, I think first past the post is well updated. And whether this is a proper committee for this motion or not, it's before this committee now. I was elected on the first past the post as well, but that doesn't make it correct. And that, does not, that also doesn't make me hypocritical for supporting Pat's uh, notice of motion. Um, it is outdated. It is undemocratic. It leads to bad government. And we've seen that with, with a huge majority that the Conservatives had under Margaret Thatcher. And that, dare I say, it also highlights the huge majority Tony Blair got. Yeah and what happened with that Labour government. <coughs> so there's two illustrations of first past the post because majority, huge majority governments are not good for democracy and they're not good for the country. PR um, would lead to better government and coalitions, and I'm not going to mention coalitions by name, um, but there's nothing wrong with coalition government. It produces better government, and that's what we're after, and that's what this notice of motion is bringing to the fore. What we want in this country is better government from all the parties, and PR would help, and I, for one, will be supporting this notice of motion. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Chris? Thank you, Chair. Um, well said, Mike, that was good. I'm really told what you said. It's quite nice to see the difference in being attacked on one side and then having an answer on the other. Shouldn't be party politics. No, it should be the leadership of this committee, to be honest. But I just wanted to make a, a, a couple of points uh, in answer to Steve's questions um, of not having a female council on the world. I think we just had one who was a mayoress and she's been on the council for how long? Okay, I'll write to you later. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, with regard to First past the post, I agree with you totally, and I will be supporting it. You did have a female. What did you want to say? So what are you about to get a female? Right. Any more comments, Ian? Yeah, okay. Yes, clearly, this commission's ability to change the voting system is probably not. But the fact it has been referred to this committee, again, there's no solution. A valid no solution. Um, just to decide it was valid. By the head of the world at the time, and it's come before this committee, the third weather mayor. Um, I would, nothing I can do to do with world politics, but I would say that the reason why the two examples that Mike gave, which he feels are such bad examples, the Conservative government in the 80s and the surprisingly the Labour government in the 1990s and 2000s, both were elected with big majorities, not because of the voting system, but because of the weak opposition. Those five them at both times. So it was the, it was the Labour Party's fault in the 80s and the Conservative Party's fault in the 90s that led to. Thatcher and Blair respectively. It wasn't the voting system uh, about that time. And I have to say, Madam Mayor, sorry, Madam Mayor, I have to say, <laughs> <laughs> thinking ahead, I have to say, uh, I have to say, uh, sitting on this side of the, of the, of the committee uh, tonight and you know, the last couple of meetings of various committees, I have to say the biggest coalition that I see is the Labour group. That's the biggest coalition that I see tonight. <laughs>
And you know, I'm, I'm quite a fan of all the English and, and that kind of thing. I think it does help. But I mean, fundamentally, it's just easier for marginalised groups, including ethnic minorities, to get elected under a fair voting system. They get squeezed out by an unfair voting system. So if we want to kind of increase the number of women, if we want to increase the number of ethnic minorities in councils, in government, I mean, we need a fair voting system. And that's just, that's just, I think that's just a basic item, basic item of fairness. You know, might sum it up very, very well in our closing comments. And I hope, I hope members will listen to us. Thank you. Okay.
in College Victoria at Chatterton, who is um, involved in the, the Nations of Air Quality on the Well, he's here to answer questions as well. So, presentation, as we've done before, if you want to ask questions during the presentation, please, please do so. I'll wait to the end. We go to the discussion at the, uh, at, the, at the end of our presentation as well. So, what we're going to cover briefly is uh, I'm going to give you a strategic overview of air quality. Um, it's a it's a timely topical issue. You will be aware that the government um, launched their plan in July. I'm going to give you some details about that. I want to explain how we will um, measure air quality, uh, what we do, uh, who we report to, etc. Uh, we want to give you an update on what is happening across the city region. And things are changing and, and happening in that respect, and our, and our position on, on uh, across the region. I mentioned the government's plan. I'm going to give you details about what that entails and what opportunity it gives us uh, and access to funding, etc. And we'll uh, then talk about uh, opportunities and issues that, that uh, relate to air quality moving forward. So in terms of strategic overviews, quite a lot of bullet points over you can see them there. Um, we'll just go through them. As I said, the government uh, launched its plan for improving air quality in the UK in July. It, 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 um, it was a culmination of a considerable period of consultation in the legal challenge, but nonetheless it's out. Uh, the plan includes a headline, as you're all, as you're all um, sure, for the summer of, uh, of um, ending the sale of uh, diesel and petrol cars by 24. So that was the headline long term uh, objective. However, there's a range of short and medium term objectives um, on addressing the most polluted uh, locations in the UK. Um, it requires, the, the government requires the local authorities to take action to establish what are called clean air zones or CASIs in such locations. Um, I have to say that uh, that doesn't apply to, to anywhere in the major size as you'll as you'll hear. Across the region there are eleven declared air quality management areas for locations that will exceed or likely to exceed legal um, levels for nitrogen oxide uh, nitrogen dioxide levels. Sorry. And there are five hundred and forty three of these so called uh, areas in the UK, in, in England. Again, I'll stress none. Uh, are in rural. We've not had to declare uh, such, a, such an area for, for our authority. Local authorities are required by statute to explain how that works to you in more detail to measure uh, um, the uh, assess air quality. Uh, the, therefore, rural has an established uh, measuring arrangement which we're going to explain and the sources we have on that. Uh, we report air quality measures on an annual basis to DEFRA and then they uh, review our, our submission and give us comments. And, and historically, um, we've always received positive feedback in terms of our uh, structure, the adequacy of it, and the measurements being below threshold. So, before we, we go on to how we measure air quality, um, just a quick overview of what um, the main, our main pollutants. <coughs> um, air pollution is a mixture of particles and gases that have an effect on uh, human health. Um, the government has set Statutory levels for seven pollutants. Uh, the main two that concern us that we presented tonight are on um, particle matter and nitrogen dioxide, uh, as, as they're most concerned. Much of uh, particulate matter in urban environments, as you can expect, comes from traffic sources. Uh, transport is also a major contributor to nitrogen dioxide emissions, particularly from diesel powered cars, lighting light duty vehicles such as cars and vans. It's interesting to note that in the years since 2000, the 16 years that have occurred, uh, diesel cars have increased from 3.2 million uh, to over 12 million in the UK. Um, a statistic from Public Health England uh, using various number of amounts of modelling um, techniques estimate that in rural particulate matter contributes potentially to 166 approximately premature deaths per year. However, on the as you will hear, a comparison between 2010 and 2015 is that basically nitrogen dioxide levels are diminishing, they are beginning, they are reducing here, and they are below the uh, national threshold. In terms of the threshold, uh, apologies that this is a slightly busy slide, this is taken from the um, uh, uh, submission we take, we send to DEFRA. These are the measurements of uh, air pollutions, and the, the first two are the, uh, are the key ones for us nitrogen dioxide and particulate matter. 
Um, there is an, an annual meeting, because we measure this on an ongoing basis, which again we will hear from. Basically, the tolerance uh, is, is there to a 40 uh, micrograms per cubic metre of air. Uh, and that's what we measure against. The others are, are measured, or be measured in the past, but they are low uh, and, 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 and insignificant at the moment, so we don't measure them in the same way that we do for nitrogen dioxide and particle, particle matter. I'll we'll hand over to my colleague. Through you, Chet. Um, what I want to do now is to go through uh, Wirral's air quality monitoring arrangements. Um, as Mike has explained to us, all uh, local authorities have a duty to review the air quality in their area um, every year. Um, and as Mike has mentioned, we produce a, a air quality in an annual status review, as called. We submit that to DEFRA and they look at it and see if it's robust and appropriate. Um, the current annual status review and interest for last year is still with DEFRA, they are looking at it uh, and uh, the preliminary information we have is they are satisfied with it. Once hopefully they have approved it, it will be circulated. Um, councils must declare air quality and management areas um, and reduce plans where the levels that we measure exceed the statutory uh, limits. Um, currently, uh, just to echo what I said, we don't have any air quality management uh, areas on Wirral. We'll have a look at some of the results uh, in a moment. So how do we measure air quality and uh, what are we measuring and looking for? We're looking at um, nitrogen oxides, pollution nitrogen dioxide. Now this is a pollutant that my said is uh, associated with, with vehicles and transport, probably about 80% of it uh, comes from transport. That's, this is the pollutant that the government is most worried about. Overall in the UK it's been trending down, but we've got some hot spots um, in the country that the government is very concerned about. We measure nitrogen oxide by uh, using some quite old fashioned technology called diffusion tubes. Um, uh, if you're very observant as you're driving around, um, you might spot that they are um, almost like test tubes that are secured to lampposts or the fronts of houses um, that we put up every month. Then a month later we go, we collect them, we send them off to the lab. They tell us um, by looking at the material within them what the concentration of um, nitrogen and oxides is likely to be in that area. Um, we have 21 of these spread throughout the borough um, and they are mainly targeted at traffic hotspots. So we've spoken to colleagues in transport and historically that's where we've put them, looking where we think the problem is going to be worse. As well as those, we have two uh, air quality monitoring stations that are run by the government, by DEFRA within the borough. And they monitor uh, air quality in, in real time. They are located in Victoria Park in Tranmere, and also there is a smaller unit on Borough Road. Uh, and they look at a wider, slightly wider variety of things. The one in uh, Victoria Park looks at ozone and particulates <coughs> nitrogen oxides. So where, where are our main issues? We will have a look at a graph in a moment, but the main air quality um, hotspots, if you like, areas that have a higher level of nitrogen uh, oxide are Singleton Road, in this area of Singleton Road, Harrow Park, the A41 and Paul Sunlight area, and there's also some in Policy Road in this well, which I'll come on to in a moment. So, um, can you just tell us where Singleton Road is? Singleton Avenue, I do apologize. But can I just say that they're all busy roads, so it's, it's very plain that, that, that they'll be hotspots because all of them out park, whereabouts out park by the out park hotel, is desperately busy. And, it, and with out park, it's a junction there where, where a lot of roads converge, and we put traffic, dare I say, we've put traffic lights up 
which stop the traffic, idling engines, pumping out pollutants. So the council decisions of influencing the 166 deaths that we have, and there's 40,000, over 40,000 deaths in this country. So this is probably, if this is probably the most important uh, agenda item for the Environment Committee Act, dare I say. Thank you, thank you for that, and uh, thank you, Chair. Certainly, there are no real surprises. So there's a couple of things that I'll talk about in a moment, but where we see high volumes of traffic and stationary for long periods of time, we would expect by a higher level of some culture. Out of out of out. Uh, absolutely. Um, and some of the measures that we're thinking about taking as well uh, might address some of that, uh, some of those concerns about idling. Um, the latest measurements that we have overall show that the levels are going down nationally. Um, I think five year period um, between 2010 and 2015 was a 17% decrease in levels of um, nitrogen oxide. But in small localised areas, there are still problems around the country, and it's important that we carry on monitoring to make sure that they are not on the rise. Um, I mentioned one road that I wanted to speak on a little bit more. In 2016, one site exceeded the national air quality objective threshold, um, and that was Wallasey Road in Liscard. Um, this was following complaints about um, idling taxis at the taxi rank, um, whilst the, it didn't fit in with the, um, with the objectives of measuring the uh, house facades or schools or, or hospitals, we've carried out monitoring there to see if that is a particular problem. And again, it's probably not surprising that due to perhaps idling on the taxi rank, those are, those are elevated levels. Um, I'll have to talk a little bit more later on about what we're trying to do to address that. Um, because there aren't residences there, um, that hasn't been regarded as relevant exposure, so we've not been asked to put air quality management area in place at that location. Um, council has established an air quality liaison group, and that um, is where officers from planning, traffic and transportation, sustainability, um, environmental health and public health meet together to look at air quality and as time goes on, to, to give more scrutiny to this annual review to make sure that we're looking at the right places, we're not missing anything, um, and we're, we're behaving properly. Can I ask a question about the Stapleton Avenue? You've got a school there. Do you have to do anything different? You've got a school with a playground that is almost on to things, don't you? I'm presuming that you're talking more about where Singleton Avenue is for a road because then you get high in But even so, is that taken into account? Thank you for the future. Um, the Singleton Avenue uh, area, they are, as we'll see, I'll, I'll come on to a graph of a chart in a moment. Um, it doesn't breach the, the level um, of 40 micrograms. Um, however, it is something that this air quality group is looking at what we can do with colleagues in transportation, with, with, um, um, with maybe working with the public more to see what we can do to uh, improve the air quality and also um, try and make sure that people aren't exposed to more, air, you know, to more pollution than they need to be. Um, if that makes sense. So Sorry, does that answer the question? So, no, yes. that's the question as to where you've got this pollution and you've got mm -hmm. things like primary schools. Yes. Does, it, does that, whatever word is you use, to act faster, does that, would that inspire you? I don't know, there's some stupid sort of words. What is it? It's just the, way it's faster. The, the thing to note is, of the 21 sites, historically, one site, which, which, which can mention there, the of the threshold. Every other, every other measurement, including the Singles Avenue, is below the legal threshold. 
get quite aware that they've said that in the club forum, and I'm asking about one of them, and this is going to school me. The one is 841, presumably, is at the end of the bypass, there's no school there. Alan Hart, I don't think there's a school there. And as I understand it, children are not susceptible. There's not a school on that round there. Go on. Can we do if there is uh, an 
issue and uh, air quality that was breached. There is there's only so much that we can do um, legally if that was breached, we would have to declare an air quality management area, we would have to report it and bring it to members and we would have to we would be especially required to form an action plan that would involve consultation with uh, quality public health. Level, 